morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Glad that you're here to worship with us. Merry Christmas to all of you. I uh, pray that you had a wonderful day yesterday. And we're going to continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Service today is going to kind of reflect all of that. And we're going to sing some Christmas songs. Everyone loves Christmas songs, right? Yes. All right, and we only get to sing them for a little bit each year. And so the Sunday after Christmas, we always do a little bit of a hymn sing. And then for those of you who don't know what that is, you get to raise your hand and pick whatever Christmas song you want. I won't, we're not going to sing all the verses of every one. We'll pick a couple of verses out of each one. And we're going to sing through to make sure that we get to sing all of your favorite Christmas songs. Um, if you're not sure and you can't remember, if you look at the back of the program, uh, page 11, you'll see in the red hymnal. So you need the red hymnal and you'll need the blue hymnal. All right. If you don't have one, Mr. Paul is back there. He's got a bunch of them. He'll give a set to you. All right. You can look through for your favorite ones. And then there's some other ones that aren't in any of the hymnals. But if you really want to sing them, there's the words are listed there. And you can pick those if you want. We're going to start off throughout the service. We'll be doing this. And we're going to start off with a few Christmas songs. Um, anyone have one that they really want to sing? Favorite Christmas song? Yes, Rachel. Once in the Royal David City. Once, so number 50 in the red hymnal, Once in the Royal David City. Pick two verses for me, please. The first and the last. First and the last of hymn number 50, Once in the Royal David City. <laughs> Yes, Miss Judy. What's that? And so what number is that one? Yep. One fifty-two in black. All right. And page one fifty-two in the blue one. How many verses are there to that one? Um, all right, then we'll sing the whole thing. All right, so page one fifty-two, infant holy, infant lowly, join together in song.
68, right? First and the last, hymn number 68, The Way in the Manger. Very good. of Bethlehem, two verses. First and the last verse, hymn number 65, a little tell about it. Sing it twice, man. No. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? One more here. Anyone else have one they want to sing? Go what 57, right? 57, give me two verses. Which two verses do you want to sing? First and last in 57, we'll tell it on the moment.
not the end of it. There's other, there'll be other places where the congregation can choose. Next one comes right after the confession of sins. So that has to be a happy, joyful one. The one that are thankful for God's forgiveness. So think about that. If you have one like that, follow along with the order of worship. Almighty God, before whose presence the angels veil their faces, with reverence and love we acknowledge your glory and worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, eternal Trinity. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We join in the verse. and worship, it's right that we ask for his forgiveness, for his blessing on us, and that's what we're going to do now. O holy and most merciful Father, we confess that from birth our sinful nature has made us unfit to stand before you. What is more, we have broken your law repeatedly in our thoughts, words, and actions. So often we do the evil you forbid, we fail to do the good you command. You know our hearts and our lives, Lord. We are guilty and deserve only to be condemned. But at your gracious word, we come to you and plead. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. The Lord, our gracious Father, has forgiven all your sins through the life and death of his one and only Son, Jesus the Christ. With his resurrection from death, he has given you the sure hope of everlasting life. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So therefore, right, go now and leave the life of sin and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Song of Joy. Who has one? Yes, Miss Erica. Um, that went fast. Did you see that hand go up? <laughs> yeah. she, was, she, was like, well, she was ready. All right, what do you want? Um, number 54, where shepherds lately met. Okay, you want to pick two and verses I for like us? Verse 2 and verse 4. 2 and 4 of Where Shepherds Lately Knelt, hymn number 54.
Amen. In his word, we, we hear, hear God speaking to our hearts and guiding us in our lives. And our first lesson today is from Psalm number 84. This is going to serve as the basis of our sermon today as well. It's a psalm of praise to God. He longs, he longs to be in God's house. Psalm 84, we read a response. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home. And the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may have her young. A place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca. They make, a place, make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Till each appears before God in time. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon your shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows his favor and honor. No good thing does he hold from those who walk in his ways. O Lord Almighty, Blessed is the man who trusts in you. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forever and ever. Amen. Second lesson is recorded in the first chapter of the Gospel of John. During Christmas, we often read Matthew 1, where the angel appeared to, to Joseph and told him that he was going to have a child. And we always read Luke chapter 2, the birth of Jesus Christ, you know, Caesar Augustus issued a decree, and Mary pondered all these things. There's one more account of the birth of Christ. It's John chapter 1. And uh, maybe it's a little more, less specific about the details, the history, but maybe it's just as meaningful, right? Of course it's just as meaningful. John chapter 1, this is what it is. In the beginning was the word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. And here's the birth. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we all have received grace in place of grace already given. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last lesson is recorded in the epistle to the Romans. Ties in with our sermon today. Just a short section. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave, but gave him up for us all,
how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Place of our traditional confession of faith, we'll sing the words of in the first light. Let's stand and join together. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give you thanks for the day and the opportunity to gather as we continue to celebrate your birth and our salvation, your love for us, Lord God. Be with us as we meditate. Help us to grow and to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So did you get it? My brothers sisters. Did you get it? You hinted at it, right? The last month, maybe you left it up on your computer screen, you know, this is, you know, maybe they'll notice that this is what I'm looking at, and they'll think about this thing, this is, did you get it? Maybe you accidentally 
you know, highlighted it on the wish list, you know, and you bold, made it bold so that that's the one that would stand out and they would know that that's the one that you really wanted. Did you get it? You know, you drop little hints here and there and you, you know, uh, talk about how, oh, you know what I happened to see? Because there was something that you really wanted and you were hoping, hoping that your loved one, your family, your friend would say, oh, he, you know what he really wants? He wants that. Did you get it? I got, I got, I got some of mine. So I have been asking for this for years. OBD2 reader, and not just an ordinary OBD2 reader, but one that also does ABS breaks. I've wanted this for a long time, and I finally got my OBD2 reader. Right, for anti-lock breaks, and I know a lot of you are sitting there going, "That's a ridiculous gift." What in the world did you ask that for? But Bill is back there nodding his head, saying, "That's a good gift." <laughs> Right, and that's, that's a wise gift. And if Mike were here, he would be nodding his head too, and he'd be saying, yep, that, that's uh... <laughs> The other one that I've, that I've wanted for a long time, and this one, this one is simply because I'm lazy, is I wanted an attachment for my air compressor that had the gauge on it. So that I, you know, because it's too much work to put the air compressor on. Check the fabric. This one... <laughs> I can hook it up and just let it go until it gets to the pressure that it needs to be at. I got it. You get it? I'm being a little silly here, and it's going to get sillier in just a moment. But what I didn't get, I, I wanted it for a decade, a decade. I've been asking for it, and I still haven't got it. I've always wanted a McLaren supercar. <laughs> and I'm still driving my Honda Civic. <laughs> One of a McLaren supercar. Now that's silly, right? Did you get what you wanted? What if you didn't? And I'm not just talking about Christmas. What if God did not give you what you asked for? You prayed about it, you begged for it. And it's been on your mind for, for weeks, for months, for years. You even, you even said, you know, I'm gonna, I really want God to pay attention to me and to listen to what I'm saying because this is really important to me. So I'm going to behave better. And you pray it every night. And he didn't give it to you. And you say, but what I'm asking for is not. Why didn't you give it to me? You guys remember Jack Stokes? Jack Stokes was a, was a man who was coming to worship with us. He became homeless. We took care of him for a while. Uh, found him jobs, a place to stay, things like that. Christmas Eve morning, he died. Jack Sullivan and I saw him that morning in the hospital up in Greeley. We went to visit with him. He died later that morning after we got a chance to see him. I remember being in that room over there with him, just talking through things about his life, his goals. We were studying the Bible, and afterwards we were going to pray. I said, what do you want to pray about? What do you want? You know, where do you want to go? And this is what he wanted me to pray, and this is what we prayed. He said, Pastor, what I want is I want a steady job. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. He just wanted a job where he could take care of himself. He wanted enough money that he could buy a camper to live in. And he wanted a little dog. So we prayed to the Lord and we asked the Lord, this is like four years ago, three years ago. We asked the Lord God for a job, for a camper, and for a little dog. He never got it. God said no. How do you deal with that? When we get what we want, we know what to do. Be joyful, be thankful, be happy. When we don't get what we want, how do we behave? We get miserable and grumpy and grouchy and discontent. How do we deal with that? Psalm writer today, he's writing, and he, he desperately, he's going to the Lord God, and he wants to do something desperately. He wants to go to God's house. It's a special place for him, but there is something that is keeping him. We don't know what it is. Something that's keeping him from going up to God's house to worship. 
Maybe he's off at war. Maybe he's sick and can't get out of bed. Maybe there's some other commitment that he has that is keeping him from going. But what he wants to do is he wants to go to God's house. You and I understand that. Here you are the day after Christmas, and where are you? Because this has a special meaning to us, right? Our children were baptized here. Right? Maybe our loved ones were married here. Maybe when someone died, we found comfort here. Our brothers and sisters are here. We hear God speaking his love to us. But that's not the point that I want to make. The point that I want to make really is the psalm writer goes to the Lord God with a prayer. I want to be in your house. And God, what? Said no. That's a good prayer, right? God, I want to go to church. No. Sometimes we stop and we look at our lives and we start to say things like, this is what is good for me, this is what I want, this is what is going to make me happy, and we don't understand why God tells us no. Even what something as good and wonderful is going to, at the end of the psalm, the psalm writer seems to find some comfort and solace in who God is helps him deal with the fact that God is not answering his prayer the way that he wants. Right? This is what he writes. I'm going to read the last two verses. Print it in the program if you want to read along with it there. But this is what he writes. Now, I'm not saying you get to skip church. Pastor, I don't have to go to church. That's not my point. If that's all you take out of this, you missed it. But that's okay. Verse 11. For the Lord God is a son of and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk whose walk is blameless. The Lord Almighty, O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts him. So the Lord God Almighty is two things, he says there at the beginning, right? A sun and a shield. So let's start with talking about what those mean. Sun, what does that mean? The sun gives light, the sun gives warmth. The sun gives life. If there was no sun, it would be very cold and all of us would die. If there was no sun, the plants would not be able to produce. And the sun makes you know, we have food from the plants. What the sun is a symbol of is it is the blessing of God. The blessing, you think of the benediction, right? What do I say at the end? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine. So calling the Lord the Son is talking about all the blessings that God has showered on us. And if we stop for a minute and think about all the blessings that are ours, how many are there? And I'm not talking about the gifts that you got at Christmas alone. Or the stuff that you have. The people that God has brought into your life. The friends, the family that you have. The experiences that you've been through. The opportunities that you have in front of you. The, the gifts and abilities that God has given to you. The Faith blessings that he has showered on us, right? Hope, love, peace. A home in heaven, forgiveness. God is a son. He brings good things into our lives. And he blesses us with good things. Amen? Amen. And then he's a shield. What's a shield? A shield is the thing that protects you from dangerous things that want to hurt you and harm you, right? <clears throat> You think of, we don't really use shields in the traditional sense anymore, but you have a firewall, right? And the firewall is a shield to keep out what? <laughs> Nobody knows what a firewall is. <laughs> Y'all know what a firewall is. What's a firewall? It keeps out what? <laughs> bad stuff, bad computer stuff. It blocks it all, right? Not perfect, but God is perfect. He's a perfect shield, and he protects us from all harm, everything that would harm us in this life and spiritually, the attacks of Satan, the temptations that he brings. He is our shield. And so what he does is he brings in the good things, and he keeps out the... The Lord is our son. He is our shield. So what does it mean if you didn't get it? Let me read the next verse to you. <clears throat> no good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. 
or use blameless. It's not true, is it? By nature, all of us are, are, are blameful, right? But you and I, we, we know something. What do we know? And because we know Jesus, all of our sins have been forgiven. And so what is it? You and I are? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to shock you or anything like that. But just the truth, though, right? You and I are blameless before the Lord God because of what Christ has done. And because of that, what does it say in there? He withholds no good thing. Do you believe that? The Bible says it's true. That's what it says, right? The problem is that you and I have trouble accepting that. Believing that this is really happening and that this is the way God really works because we look at certain things where we say, God, I, I know that this would be good for me. I, I know that this is what, what I need. I need a McLaren. <laughs> what does God say to me? And I don't understand why. I don't understand what's going to be not so good about it. And I made it silly. But you could put your serious thing in there too and you say that this would be good. This would be best. And God, in his infinite, infinite wisdom, and his infinite love, looks at that and says, I know that you think that. And I know that you believe that. But I know something you don't. And I love you too much to give you this thing that you think is going to be good for you. Because it will not be. He withholds no good thing from those who are blameless in him. That's hard. That takes faith to trust that this is actually what God promises. That this is actually the way that he behaves and the way that he treats us. That he really is a son who blesses us with good things. And if he doesn't give it to me, that means that it is not good for me right now. That he is a shield. And everything that he lets come into my life, it is something that he is protect. If he doesn't let it come into my life, it's because he's protecting me from harm. And that's hard. When it's good, we know to rejoice. We know to celebrate. We know to thank God. We know to trust that God is in control. And he gave me this. And what a great thing. I'm so glad God agreed with me. When he does it, the response is the same. To celebrate the fact that God loves you. To find joy and satisfaction in the fact that God is watching over me, that he is my son, and that he is my shield. And to trust him. That if it was really good for me today, then what? God is my son. He is my shield. And then what does he say? He closes with it all. Oh, Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Whether he gives it to me or not, to trust, to trust his wisdom and his love. If I trust his wisdom and his love, what does he say? I'm blessed. That word gets mixed up. It means happy. Happy is the one who trusts in the Lord, whether he gives it to me or not. May the Lord God this Christmas, whether we got what we wanted or not, whether God tells us yes or God tells us no, may we trust his wisdom, may we trust his love, and may we celebrate all the things that God does and doesn't do in our lives. For Jesus' sake. All right, let's sing another song. Who has one that they want to sing? Miss J. Wait, did I saw another hand over here. You put you did you pick one already? Yeah. Can I can I call on her? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Who has the one over here? Yeah, we've got What child is this? Give me two verses. One and three, one and three of sixty seven.
continue with our prayers for today. Special prayers have been requested for the family of Jack Stokes. Um, there will be a memorial service or a funeral service of some sort for him in the days ahead. I'll keep the congregation informed as best as possible. Um, we also pray for those who are celebrating birthdays. We have Rachel Sternhagen, whose birthday is today, and, and Stephanie Cook's birthday is today as well. And uh, Jace Whitney's birthday is later on this week. Uh, anniversaries, Tony, Tony and Natalie Reagan and Micah and Sarah Derry. Are there any other prayer requests for them? Yes, Miss Carmen. Oh, yeah. I want to pray for my brother, Juan. Juan. Okay. What are we praying for one? Yeah. What are we praying about? Excuse me? What What do we want to pray for? He had a problem with a nerve in his head. Okay. And also want to pray for Jay health. Jay's health. Okay. Sister Jay continues to struggle with her health. Yes, Nicolina. I want to pray for, I want to pray for myself because I have to pray for Jesus. Healthy baby, we will do that. That's an exciting time, right? Yeah. Miss Maria. Um, my son's mother-in-law um, ended up with her the other night, and originally she was supposed to be meeting with Christian and children, and her health is taking a turn. What is her name? She can't spell it. Right. It was uh, on Thursday. All right, so we'll thank God for that, right? Safe, everyone's good and safe and healthy. Yes. Just everyone who's traveling again, or driving long distances to get home. All right. We'll pray for them. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm of God, uh, children. Okay. What makes what what has inspired you to, to ask for that? The program. Yeah. The program. All right. So our children. So if you weren't here on Christmas Eve, had a great program. Children did a great job, didn't they? They did a nice job. Yeah. yeah. And then also, I forgot Lucy Lucy Ling. Her grandson has COVID, so remember Lucy's grandson has COVID. Can't remember his name. Anything else? Any on, any online? All right. All right. Safe travel for the for members of the Lepus family, and then. Uh, Oliver? Okay, so we're going to pray for Oliver. He has a doctor's appointment, so we'll remember Oliver in prayer. For Anything else? Let's stand and join together in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the day, for the opportunity to worship, for the birth of your son, for time with family, for time off of work. We thank you for that. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless us the rest of this day. Uh, and we come to you with some special prayers. Pray, first of all, for those who are traveling, that you would watch over them and keep them safe. Send angels to guard, protect, make their journey smooth, and help them reach their destination safely. We think of Pam and Kyle and uh, all those who are traveling, and my brother and his family. Lord God. Uh, we give you thanks, Lord God, for the gift of life. For the life that you have given to Cage, Lord God, and thank you for bringing him and mom safely through delivery. Pray and commit them to your care and ask for your blessing. We also thank you for the years of life that you have given to Rachel and to Stephanie and to Jace. We pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless them with many more years. Watch over them this year. Uh, help them every day to see your love, your grace, your hand at work in their life. Thank you for watching over them this last year. We also, Lord God, give you thanks for the life that you have given to Nicolene uh, and, and pray that you would keep her and the baby safe through delivery. As, uh, as the day comes, pray, Lord God, that you would watch over and make everything go well, Lord God. Protect baby, protect mom. We thank you for that baby, Lord God. We, give you, we come to you on behalf of those who, uh, who are mourning the death of a loved one. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, first of all, for the salvation that you have given to Dell and to Jack Stokes. In their life, you watched over them, you guided them, you brought them to faith, you rescued them from this world of trouble, and have brought them home to be with you in heaven. And we thank you for that and celebrate that first. 
Pray also, Lord God, that you would be with those who are left behind. As they mourn, as they grieve, as they try and put their lives together, we ask that you would guide them and bless them and help them to within these difficult days. Be with those families and bless them. We thank you also, Lord God, for the years of marriage that you have given to Tony and Natalie, to Micah and Sarah. Pray that you would continue to bless their marriages and all marriages, Lord God. Thank you for bringing them together, for the commitment that they have, and pray, Lord God, that you would teach them, continue to strengthen their marriage and teach them to be like you. Teach them to be one. Teach them to be forgiving, Lord God. Teach them to be understanding. Pray, Lord God, for those marriages and ask for your blessing. We pray for all those who are struggling with illness, Lord God, and we ask for your blessing and for healing on them. You know their troubles more than we do. You understand even what the doctors don't. So we commit them to your care. We bring them to you and ask for your blessing. On with a nerve illness in his face, Lord God. Pray that you would be with Jay and the issues, health issues that she is facing. Pray that you would be with Sheridan's mommy and that you would bless her and heal her. Be with him, Lord God. Bless his doctor's appointment and, and, and pray. Calm his heart, Lord God. Know that you are with him and bless him. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We join together in singing uh, the Lord's Prayer, Tune of Away in the Manger. with us and the amazing thing is after you came to worship us with us you actually decided to stay <laughs> and then you fell in love with us and we fell in love with you and you became part of our family and so we are here to celebrate this and make this official today amen yeah. my sisters through his gracious plan jesus brought you to be a part of this family of believers to hear god's word with us to grow in faith with us, to serve with us, to encourage each other. We are grateful to our Lord for your desire to join our family of believers. Nicolene and Stella, as sisters of our fellowship, we will have certain expectations of you, and you may rightly have certain expectations of us. We may rightly expect that you will be faithful in making use of opportunities to grow in your faith, through worship, Bible study, and regular participation in the Lord's Supper. And that, all, and that you will also be faithful in using your talents and treasures to support the spread of the gospel in this place and around the world. As you enter our fellowship, you may rightly expect that we, your brothers and sisters, will provide you with opportunities to grow in your faith, 
We will, we will share with you all of the blessings God has entrusted to us for use in his church, that we will be by your side in times of decision and crisis, as well as times of joy and celebration. And from me, your pastor, you may expect the honest teaching of God's word and a willingness to listen. These are the privileges and benefits that membership in our congregation involve. If you now desire to be a partner in the gospel with us at Living Hope, if so answer yes with God's help. And to you, the brothers and sisters of Living Hope, who have been reminded of your responsibilities, do you accept Nicolene and Stella as your sisters? If so, answer yes with great joy. Yes, yes with great joy. joy. And do you promise to minister to your sisters with your concern, your support, your prayers, and your fellowship? If so, then answer yes in Christian love. Yes in Christian love. And based on these promises, we welcome you as our sisters at Living Hope Lutheran Church. We dedicate ourselves to be a blessing to you the same way that the Lord has sent you to be a blessing to us. Let's give you a right hand of fellowship to welcome you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith, in mercy you joined these souls to your church when they were born again of water and the Spirit. In mercy you taught them your saving truth. Grant that they may offer themselves as living sacrifices to you as their spiritual act of worship. Transform them by the renewing of their minds so that they will not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Help us to live in love and harmony with one another and work together in serving you. Keep us united in your spirit and bring us at last to your eternal kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's welcome our sisters. And of course, because someone joined our fellowship, what do we have after church today? Cake. 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 We always have cake. <laughs> Everyone's favorite, right? All right. Let's stand for the blessing. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live at harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with joy. The Lord bless you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look on you with his favor and give you his peace. <laughs> Before we sing a few more songs, take a moment to greet the people around you, shake their hands, welcome them to church this morning. of things that I'd like to highlight just quickly if you look at the back of the program there will be no Bible class or Sunday school today um, and we're taking a little bit of a break and next Sunday as well we will not have Sunday school or Bible class and everyone goes yay <laughs> um, membership directories so uh, we haven't had one for a couple of years but there are membership directories in the back on the shelf um, it has doubled in size in the last two years. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a neat thing, isn't it? So you can pick up a copy on your way out so you know who everyone is. You know, you've asked the person seven times what their name is, and you feel lousy because you can't remember what their name is. 
Well, now you can look at the membership directory and forget the whole thing. No. Um, um, help with, uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me maybe five minutes of help after church today, I'd appreciate it. We still have chairs and things set up from Christmas Eve. Um, so if you if you were able to stick around for an extra five minutes after fellowship and stuff like that, put some stuff away. It shouldn't take us very long. I'd really appreciate the help. Moving steel pans and everything, right? Anything else that it needs to highlight? I think that's it. Lord's blessings on your week. Thank you to our guests and visitors for coming. Let's sing uh, two more songs, right? Anyone else have one? Any someone? Yes, Hannah. The first Noel that's in the program itself. Give me two verses. First and second. First and second, the first Noel. Through your mother for a loop. I got it. in the red hymnal, Oh Rejoice All Christians Loudly. Oh, 45 in the red hymnal. Rejoice, so give me how many verses? Give me two um, verses. One and four. One and four. 45 in the red hymnal. Four, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should see him singing the song to find out what the, what the music is. <laughs>
it as long as it can to fix them. Try it a lot. <laughs> so no. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sing Joy to the World? No one likes that song. Who likes that? Yeah. Joy to the World. Give me two verses. 62. The first one. No, give me two verses. The last one. First and the last, <laughs> hymn number 62. 